Hello everyone, Fisherman here. Welcome back to Rose Lake Park. It's been a long time. We've added quite a bit to the park this decade, so we are in the 1939 map. We're going to be splitting this recording into two videos because we've added so much. I am joined today by Wolf Tenor. Good afternoon. And also by Matt Downs. Good evening. Matt is joining us all the way from the UK. So he was kind enough to stay up at night uh, to record with us today. So this is Rose Lake Park. Um, if you're not familiar with the series, it's a park we're following from its early beginnings as a trolley park in the late 1800s, all the way our plan is to go all the way up through the current present time. Right now we are at the end of the 30s, so this, this map represents 1939. To start us off, we're going to talk about some things that happened in the 1930s. Of course, we had the Great Depression in the United States. World War II is about to start. And at the park itself, we had part of the backstory here. We had a flood. So the Rose River Valley, the Rose River, which feeds Rose Lake, flooded. There was a, a week of rain and much of the park flooded. Um, I'm going to post a video. You know, we have some archival film footage that was taken at the park during the aftermath of the flood. You'll be able to see what the park looked like directly after the flood. But the park did survive. And so what you're seeing here is during those four years following the flood, the park was able to rebuild and it, it bounced back, you know, more successful than ever. And we'll kind of get into some of the things that helped bring the park back to life today and next week when we record the next video. To start us off, what you're looking at right here in the middle of the screen is something that I'm going to let Matt talk about because he helped us out. He is kind of our vehicle go-to guy right now. He's been building us some amazing vehicles, you know, boats, buses, trucks, you name it. So we're going to be showing off some of his great creations today and next week. Um, so Matt, why don't you start us off with this amazing speedboat that you have here? Yeah, so these, um, yeah, these are based on uh, Chris Craft runabout boats, 24-foot ones. Um, I was kind of using references from the early 30s, but I think they were still building these through 60s, 70s, um, quite a long time. They're wooden, wooden boats, um, but they are motorboats. I think I kind of originally started putting it together thinking, you know, perhaps uh, the Major General would have a, a boat out on the lake that he could uh, go racing around on, but um, everyone kind of liked the finished result so much that it snowballed from there. I think there's 16 of them, if I remember rightly, or something. Yeah, I think it's 16 of them, um, kind of out on the lake um, and in various places. And it kind of it all it all spiraled. And there's um, I think we'll be coming to a building shortly that is kind of part of the snowball effect of these. But yeah, there's quite a, quite a few of them around. Yeah, so we were able to kind of turn it into a sort of an attraction at the park where you could rent out a boat for the day or something and take it around the lakes and up and down the river for the day. Yeah, so it's absolutely beautiful. I can't remember how many pieces it is. I know it's quite a few. Oh, so it'll, be, it'll be a 14, lot. Yeah, fi about 1,500 <laughs> pieces. There's a, there's a lot of beams in there to try and get the, the curves right. Um, and also, I mean, there's there's details I probably didn't need to go into. There is a, like a propeller and a, a rudder underneath and like you know the steering wheel, all the seats and um, yeah, it was, I, I can't help myself. I always put a lot of details in and then regret it later when I look at the parts count. But. <laughs> no, we're, it's amazing. And please don't ever stop putting details in your creations for us because they're breathtaking. All right. And so we talked about where on the lake that you would, um, where you would pick up one of these boats for the day. So I'm going to go over here. So this is Rose Lake. Remember, we have, if you're not familiar with the geography here, we've got Rose Lake is the big lake at the top. So it represents the rose of Rose Lake. And then on the left, we have the left leaf, which is Lake Lime, which is, Lime is um, left in Planko. And then we have Rama on the right, which is, uh, Rama is right in Planko. So we have left leaf, uh, right leaf, and then the Rose River feeding into all of those. Um, so on on Rose Lake itself, we have this gorgeous um, brand new Art Deco boathouse, which is where you would be able to, you know, get your speedboat that is parked underneath. Oh, 
I'm going to turn it over to Matt and uh, Wolf Tanner because they both worked on this. Yeah, this, this like I say, it kind of it spiraled um, from the boats, kind of thinking, okay, right, where, where are we going to hire these out from? I think I originally, when I built this originally, so it's kind of, I was looking just for like Art Deco boat houses and I, I found uh, White Rock Lake, uh, Dallas, Texas. And I, I kind of like the style. So I had these, like the columns that you see along and the kind of the square kind of base that you see here. Um, but it didn't have anything on the top. So it didn't have the bar or anything like that. It's got a flat roof. Um, and I think I made it, it was about half the size of this, I think. Um, so we wouldn't have been able to have as many uh, as many boats. And I think we, we decided sort of as I was building it to uh, to expand it, which I was really pleased about because it's not really on grid. So it, it, it took a bit of fiddling to make it bigger. But um, yeah, it, it worked out really nicely. Um, I've tried to base kind of the interior as well on on the White Rock Lake one, so there's you know, the space inside for all the, uh, the for the speedboats. I also added a kind of maintenance area down this end where we are now, um, so there's kind of an area they can lift the boats out of the water and and do work on them as well. Um, so they're uh, they're artificial artists, aren't they? The um, the mooring cleats in there came along at just the right time, um, really kind of finished off that interior but it's yeah it's pretty similar to the white rock lake um both inside and outside the kind of the base of the boathouse um and then uh, you added the the windows later fisherman you made them uh, see through because originally i think i just used in-game windows right and i was inspired i'd stayed at a um, bed and breakfast in galveston texas a long time ago and it had a cobalt glass transom windows on the interior and I was just thinking, you know, we had a lot of blue accents on the, the boathouse and I was thinking that would be really gorgeous to have you know, some sort of blue glass in there. You know, totally unnecessary to have you know, beautiful blue stained glass inside of a boathouse, but I was thinking why not? <laughs> Rose Lake is a pretty extravagant place already so we went with it. I think it turned out really nice. For certain times of day when the sun, like you get the light through them in, into the boathouse as well, it, it looks really cool. It's a, yeah. It's a nice. Nice, nice finishing touch. Cool. Yeah, it all came together. I think we had, I don't know, at least three people working on this building. Might have been more. I think it was three. Yeah, I think just, just the three yeah. of us. Yeah. But I love when you're inside. There's something about the color of the water. And I guess it's the how shallow the water here is but it just it looks very realistic with the light coming in like that it's amazing i love it <laughs> you did a really good job all right so let's let's look upstairs <laughs> up on the deck so we couldn't just leave it with a flat roof we had to go and do more than that since we are the rose lake park team of course we have to go above and beyond so so matt you built the exterior of this did you have anything in mind were you inspired by any sort of structure other than just art deco architecture in general i don't think there was kind of anything specific when i started building it um originally i think i was trying to build i was thinking oh perhaps we'll have like you know the like a bus terminal or something at rose lake and i'll try and build something art deco for that so again originally was smaller than than what you see there um, and I kind of just, I started messing around with it and it kind of got bigger and bigger. And then I was like, oh, it's not really going to work as a bus terminal. It's a bit, it's a bit much. Um, and we were just, I think, I think we'd had discussions about, wouldn't it be nice to have, you know, like a building on top of this boathouse, you know, a bar or something. Um, and I just, ha the, I would just have to be building this in the same like uh, park map and just thought, oh, I'll try it. And I shifted it across and it just seemed to, to fit. It seemed to work really well. Um, and it still gave us like that nice terrace that we've got up the top there as well for all the outside tables. So it just, it kind of all, it all came together, but it, it was never intended to go up on top of the, the boathouse. But uh, cool. yeah, it works really nicely. And I guess when we first built it, we weren't, we weren't really sure what we were going to put inside. And it was, I guess it kind of sat empty for a while. And then Wolf Tinner had some free time and <laughs> <laughs> we can, we convinced him. <laughs> He loves he loves interiors, and so, Wolf Tinner, why don't you tell us about what you did inside, what inspired you, and what 
you know, what did you come up with in here? Well, it was one of those things where you look at pictures and stuff and nothing really fits. So I'm like, okay, here's the space I have. How can I get it to work? And uh, it is, it actually is peepable, not inside, but um, there's two shops. So you can, peeps can get to the two, uh, two shops there, not actually to the interior restaurant part, but they can do the whole outside terrace and stuff like that. Um, but it was just a matter of trying to get everything that a bar would have in this little, you know, pretty narrow space. Um, right. And it just, I say, it just kind of transpired as it went along. Um, and everybody, you know, helped out here and there because some of the curves I was fighting with. So I think, Fisherman, you helped me with the with the, cur the curve in the back there and the ceiling medallion and stuff like that. So I, I think, say we, it was, I think Matt, Matt, did, you, did, yeah. you did the star, right? Uh, yeah, the star like light at the top. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Matt did this, and then we kind of, I think I did the little wallpaper thing, yeah, the wallpaper I, in the back, and then we all sort of tried to figure out what to do at the top <laughs> over here, and then we worked on the the murals together. Yeah, because yeah. you found those, and so we were able to get those up there, and uh, was do the mirror some, and stuff. It's actually some crane mosaics up here inside our stork storks or cranes or something i thought they were supposed to be cranes but i don't remember now something that would live on the lake and then the, the two murals are two different uh, images of swans yeah it's a huge cool. group effort I, i'd forgotten <laughs> yeah. how much is in here it's uh, yeah and then if you came out this way onto the back terrace i remember when all this started, we didn't really know what we were going to put back here. Let me switch the time of day back to... So, I remember we kind of didn't really have a direction for what we were going to do back here. And I remember the land just sort of sloped down into the, the building here. And then I think we kind of came up with the idea of what if we split it off a little bit so that the water could kind of come over underneath and we made like a little bridge on each side to get to the boathouse. So that's sort of how we ended up with that. So there's a sort of little little pond area where you have some fish and there's a, a swan resting here. Um, so it's a nice little romantic place. You need to come, little, come along here and walk. Um, looks really nice at, at night. There's some fireflies and things in there. And this is actually where you would access the boathouse itself through these blue doors down on the lower level. So yeah. That worked out really nice. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, you know, all, all three of us, you know, throwing things out and saying, what about this? Let's try that. Let's, you know, what do you think kind of thing? And that's, and that's what makes it so much fun yeah. when you're, you know, you're all, you're all working on it together. So, and, uh, so Wolf Tenor, tell us about the name Sir Montagues. How did we come up with that name? for the bar itself. There's quite the backstory. And uh, if you, it's not in the blog yet, but it will be uh, in our Rose Lake blog that um, has all these amusing backstories of how all these places got named in everybody's history. Um, we do have a character uh, named uh, Reginald Downtownton. He's uh, one of our new patrons from, see, from Great Britain. Uh, his great granddad was Sir Montague, and Sir Montague was a officer, a captain actually, uh, of the Royal Navy, of the HMS Kerfluffel. And uh, we all felt that Sir Montague needed to be named after a bar because he did like his drink, and the entire boathouse actually kind of looks like a ship. So that's kind of how we came up with that name. Um, you can read all of these stories and more at, on our blog at roselakepark.blogspot.com. And, and we'll put a link down in the uh, in the comment things, I think. At least I'll have it done at least through the 20s and maybe a couple of 30 stories. So you can follow along and, and uh, figure out what all these crazy people do for a living. 
This is a really beautiful place. <laughs> Looking up at the flying turns. Oh, some some great views of the lake from the bar as well. I mean, it's that's true. It's a beautiful spot in the park. Let's go back up here. I think we took a million screenshots of this when we first made it. <laughs> yeah. Different times of the day. But yeah, even from you know sitting up here at a table, you can see Michaela's up there on the hill and looking out over the lake. I mean, I would want to eat here. I'm going to jump through the window. There's worse places to be, right? Exactly. But yeah, it's gorgeous. You know, if it's a, if it's a you know in the fall or the spring, you probably won't be eaten alive by mosquitoes. So. It's true. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. There's no mosquitoes on our lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course not. One thing, everybody, if you if you download our parks, well, first of all, be patient. <laughs> it takes a long time to open our park file. We have a lot of TMTK, but take time to get the audio files. You know, we have some sound effects files and music files. Because if you you might be able to hear on this recording, you know we have some ambient sound effect files that we've added. Um, there's loons on the lake, there's frogs, you know, crickets, all sorts of things like that. So it's really nice. It's worth it. Worth the download time. You know, be patient. So let's go. Where are we going to go next? We're going to actually head over to the boardwalk next. Did you guys have anything else you wanted to say about the boathouse? It, yeah, it's one of my favorite spots in the park. I think it's just. It is a great. I'd love to be able to go and sit there and uh, have a drink. Definitely. All right. So we're going to head over to the boardwalk area. Not a whole lot changed here. One one major change. The, the floodwaters came up to the arches on the boat dock here. So water got pretty high. And you know we can kind of say it probably messed up the drive mechanism for the old flying gondolas ride, but they replaced it. They updated it with the uh, Skyrockets ride here, which is uh, based on a more modernized version of one of Harry Traver's circle swing rides. If you were one of the people who ever saw Kaleidoscope Piers, you probably recognize this because it came right from that park. I just repainted it a little bit. So it's based on the Zephyr ride, Golden Zephyr, at Disney's California Adventure. That's what I based it on. So that's there. Pretty cool. And just like the Flying Gondolas ride, there is a second version of the swings kind of hidden down under the water. So you can swap them out. You know, if you want to take a screenshot with the Zeppelins in flight, you can just swap them out. So that's kind of a little extra thing for you there. So that's really the only thing that changed on the lake itself. But we have something brand new over here. I'm going to let Wolf Tenner talk about it. I'm going to switch the lighting while he's talking here. So what did you do to the Swan Pavilion? You updated something for us here. Keeping up with the times, um, they decided since they did have such a large venue that uh, traveling musicals could now find a home at Rose Lake. So in 1934, the uh, co-ported musical Anything Goes opened. And then a few years later, they started touring around the country. And we were lucky enough to get one of the, one of the tour groups. And so here are the ladies of the chorus singing and dancing to the title tune of the show. And uh, hopefully you can hear it if you get close enough. But uh, it actually originally starred Ethel Merman was her first big breakout role. And uh, after that, went on to star on many, many Broadway shows. So yeah, so it's it's trying to keep up to date here and uh, keep the people new, you know, keep new people coming into the park for different things. Very cool. And before you had the Moulin Rouge sort of can-can girl act on the stage with the big windmill. Yeah. And then I think before that, it was just like a, like a concert, sort of a concert version kind of a thing. Yeah, now you've, you've got this big uh, amphitheater. Why not use it? There's your poster advertising it from the front. Very cool. All right. Excellent. Okay. Anything else you want to say about the amphitheater? Uh, no, it's pretty much stayed the same. Um, at some point, you know, they'll need to update the chairs, but 
Because <laughs> <laughs> they probably aren't that comfy. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think it's 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 been a good venue for us. So we'll just they'll just keep bringing in new shows. Very cool. All right. So while we're in this area, there's a couple of new things down here. We've got the we added some rides uh, to Comet Plaza. There's a company called Ierly that made some new rides. Um, one of the rides they made was the Rolloplane. So that's this one here. I think we actually just called it Rolloplane. Yeah, they're very original. So we have the Rolloplane ride. Um, we have our Flying Eagles, Flying Scooters ride. That was made by a company. I looked it up called Bish Rocco. They started making them in the 30s. So they were the first company to make the Flying Scooters ride. And then if you go here, this is our first generation Ierly Octopus. And we asked, you know, Redline 682, he normally makes uh, carousels for, for people that he shares with people. But we did a trade with him. I made a dark ride for him for Laurel Gardens. And he made us this um, amazing Ierly Octopus ride. So it's very detailed, you know, pretty much like the real thing. So yeah, so we put it here on the water next to these other rides. We did this, this is sort of kind of a tribute to Indiana Beach. You know, Indiana Beach was kind of struggling this past year. We, they weren't sure if it was going to come back. Fortunately, it did. Um, but it kind of based this on that, you know, Indiana Beach has all of its, you know, a bunch of its flat rides kind of hanging off onto the lake. And so I did that here as well. Um, and we'll probably do that. We'll probably continue that trend going around the lake as we build. Um, so yeah, there was those, those two rides there. And we added a little... Got a picnic pavilion down here at the end to kind of cap off the end of the path there. I think our plans are to continue this path on around the back of the big lake, Rose Lake, and eventually sort of meet up with the other side. That's sort of the plan. If you continue around the lake here, um, or if you continue along the path from the boathouse, you'll see um, the path kind of turns into a dirt path and it leads on around here. There used to be um, the old fishing camp over here, which was destroyed by the flood, it was completely overtaken by the floodwaters. So all those tents and the old cabins, you know, they washed away completely. But it was prime real estate, had some nice views, and so we definitely didn't want to, to lose that. So we came up with the idea to make some cabins for people to stay at while they visited our park. And so we tasked Matt to... Um, make some cabins for us and the sort of central building here. So I'm going to let Matt talk about his inspiration for these and um, how they came to be. Yeah. So it was kind of, we, we discussed it a lot and decided we wanted these, these small cabins around, around this edge of the lake. Um, so I kind of, I, I had a look around and I was trying to find something on a kind of a small footprint that I thought I could actually build in the game. Um, so these, I found some, um, they're, they're in the Grand Canyon or by the Grand Canyon somewhere, uh, Phantom Ranch cabins. Um, and these are sort of, I mean, they're, they're pretty close to those, to be fair. I, I kind of, um, yeah, I, you know, the rock work and, and the kind of the wood paneling. Um, I mean, even down to the windows are green on those and they're green on ours. But um, we added like the little sort of veranda area with the, the rocking chairs and stuff to, to take advantage of, of the lake views. Um, but that's yeah, that's kind of where the inspiration came from. Um, they are all numbered. I can't remember how many we ended up with in the end. Um, Please, but they kind of twelve, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and they kind of they just work their way along along the shoreline. Feeling these might be um, some of the smallest things I've I've put in the park in terms of like parts count. I'm not sure there's a huge amount of like I don't. I was gonna say I don't think there's any TMTK in there, but knowing me, there's probably something. But it's yeah. Very low parts count, um, one of the sort of smaller things I built, but yeah, four hundred and thirty parts. Four hundred I mean for me that's that's <laughs> modest for me. Oh my that's god. <laughs> Pretty small. Okay, oh why bother? I'm sure I mean most of that's probably the rocks on the like on the corners and stuff. So yeah. Um, so. but yeah, they just they, they they fit really well. They look really nice along there. So Okay, so besides the cabins themselves, you have the sort of central building. So what's what happens in here? What's going on in the central building here? Yes, yeah, so we built. Um, this was, I guess, kind of like the. Uh, it'd be sort of where you, um, you 
you check in for your, your cabins. And, uh, I don't know food or anything. We never, I didn't do an interior for it, but that kind of setting of the camp. Of the camp, uh, it's got a really nice terrace out the front with a couple of uh, picnic benches and stuff, and it's it's kind of where all the main facilities are. Um, it's definitely got some sort of big log fire at the back. We've got the chimney going with the smoke, and then you know you've got your like showers and and toilets and all the the facilities as well, all in this this kind of central building. I know you did put a little bit of an interior in here. I did do yeah. There is and behind those doors, I think there is toilets as well. <laughs> it's uh. Yep, there they are. So yeah, I did do um, I did do the sort of the the shower area. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Can we show that on on YouTube? Or we? I don't. Uh, I don't know. We just did. <laughs> it's okay. We're not monetized. I don't have enough subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is there's, there's men's on that side. There's the ladies the other side, which I think is identical, if I remember rightly. I mean, I don't think there's a man in the shower, but... I hope not. Yeah, there's, there's nobody in the shower on this side. <laughs> yes, the sh yeah, the showers are off on that side, and they're on in the men's side. But yeah, just it, it was a kind of... We wanted a, a communal kind of area in the middle of the camp with all the facilities, because I think, you know, the cabins are, are fairly basic. I think they've got some... Like, they've obviously got electricity, and uh, I think, yeah, there's the little chimneys on the back, so they've probably got some kind of stove, but, um, you know, it's... I guess it's what you'd call now. You'd call it glamping, right? It's uh, yeah, glamping exactly. I mean, they're in a nice shed. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> there might be some kind of food facility in there too. If you, that's where the bathrooms and the mm. showers and stuff are. They might have like maybe one meal a day or something in there. I mean, yeah. it's, not, yeah, it's not like you're that far away from the park that you can't, you know, go get something to eat. Or if you're the major general, you just have you just order it and somebody brings it to you on horseback. <laughs> He's spoiled rotten. <laughs> Pretty much. Down at this end, we put a little um, campfire where you can mingle with the other guests, toast marshmallows, make s'mores, and then I added this um, observation tower that you can climb up to the top but it's got nice views from the top pretty cool nice views of the park in the surrounding area you can see ohio on one side pennsylvania on the other <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice little bench to sit on Probably some cobweb. Yeah, there's a cobweb. I always put cobwebs up in the rafters and the stuff. Um, nice view of the boathouse. Very cool. It's nice and peaceful up there. So, yeah. so if you stay up, in, if you stay in the cabins, be sure to come up in the in the tower. So I'm gonna fly back down. So we have. Um, so we have our swimming hole over here. Let me set the lighting a little bit differently so you can see it better. Mm, Seven o'clock. We have our little swimming hole. There's a, a fire swing from the tree. There's another little um, rope swing over there. Um, and then, yeah, we have a tree house over here with a couple of swings. Um, so yeah, you can go up in the treehouse, take a look out at the lake from the treehouse. Pretty cool. And I guess you could get to the cabins um, from one of the boats. So you could take a boat to the cabin. You could walk there on the path. Uh, different ways to get there. All right, so a couple of big things left to show you guys. So we're going to go back to this sort of central part of the park. So the central area, we've got the carousel lawn area, and we've got right here next to the Savoy Theater, we have something brand new for 1939. So Kennywood has a their auto race ride. It's the last of its kind. I think Harry Traver made it. And so 
course, we have to compete with Kennywood since it's you know one state over from us. So we added our own version of the ride called our Auto Rally. Matt and I built this within like three days. <laughs> um, this week, we kind of challenged each other to build it together. Matt built the amazing cars for the ride, definitely inspired by Kennywood's cars. Um, and then I laid out the track and kind of configured the station so that everything would work together. I think it worked out pretty nicely. Um, the track is actually flying turns track that we um, put boards over to kind of cover up the empty place between the rails. And then my challenge for Matt was to make a car that would fit two people sitting in tandem that would, you know, somewhat look like the real ride. So he had to squeeze all of that in. Um, the real ride, Kennywood's Auto Race, you know, the, the steering wheel works and the, the car kind of bounces back and forth between the rails. So we kind of had to shoe, shoehorn ours in between there. Talk a little bit about your cars that you made, Matt. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a fun challenge. It was, yeah, can, you, can you try and build these cars? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah, you've got three days. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, I, they um, obviously, yeah, they're inspired by the, the Kennywood ones. I, was, I, I kind of went through a couple of kind of iterations of bodywork just to try and get it. It, it, the challenge was trying to get um, those like animatronic uh, peeps sat in the cars. Um, it, it, they're tight, you know. The real thing is a tight, they're very small. So um, yeah, that was that kind of that was the big challenge, just trying to make something that looked right, but you could still get the people in. And it, it kind of it came together really nice. So one of the things we kind of hooked on together right at the start was the wheels as well. We've got nothing in game that's, that's small enough, so that's. I mean, it's all uh, it's TMTK stuff. It's um, like a pipe base and a, a disc. Uh, I think something I made as well. So there's, it, you know, we had to get a bit creative because it, it it's quite a small, um, quite a small uh, thing to to build to a car that fits in that track. <laughs> but um, yeah, it came together really nicely and kind of yeah, it was a nice little kind of collaboration for the week, just working together and. Yeah, I, th I think it turned out really nicely, and it's it, it looks pretty close to the real thing as well. Yeah, it was a lot of fun working on this. The track I based it, it's basically a mirror image of Kennywood's. It's a little bit smaller. If I had made it the actual size, I think it would have looked kind of silly with our cars, just because the track is narrower, so the turns are a little bit smaller to kind of make it look a little bit more in proportion. So it's a little bit smaller. But the cars really are tiny on the real ride. I mean, if you guys, if you've ridden the auto race at Kennywood before, you know you know what I'm talking about. Um, for an adult to sit in it, you kind of have to sit almost side saddle because the, the seats are very tight. And this kind of goes to prove my point as well with the cabins being pretty low parts count for me is that there's probably, I think there's over twice as many parts in those tiny cars than there are in each of those cabins. Oh yeah, so let's see. Group the whole group the whole car together i think it was around i think it's just over a thousand parts or so in each one yeah a thousand sixties yeah. yeah something like that yeah so pretty big yeah <laughs> but it uh, looks great i think it's the beams that killed it it was just doing all the trying to get all the curves again um which is yeah something you'll notice in a lot of the stuff that i've built um, for the 40s with the deco and all that kind of stuff. There's so many curves, and yeah, it's but yeah, yeah. The, the only way to really achieve that in this game is to, to use a lot of beams, so just a lot of repetition. So exactly. Were you going to say I, something, Wolf Tenor? I would just say I wish we could really ride it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I made a couple little demo videos. I'll I'll put I'll make those public and post the links. Um, in this video, but it's just kind of me flying around the track to show it off. But um, yeah, it would be really cool if you could ride them. The sound effect I extracted from uh, a YouTube video of the real ride. So it's each little car has a speaker in it. So it kind of sounds pretty much like the real thing. The original auto race had hills in it. Kennywood, they took those hills out um, at some point due to safety reasons. Um, cars were stalling out going up the hills and cars were crashing into them from the back so uh, not very safe so they took those out at some point 
Um, so that's our auto rally. All right. So guys, we got one more big thing to show you guys, and it's a big thing. <laughs> so if you go over, if you remember the Bruin Auditorium, um, for the longest time it housed, you know, it had a Buffalo Bill show inside at one point, had a circus inside at some point. Somehow we came up with the idea at some point during this map that we needed to build the Rose Lake Ballroom. And we're like, well, where can we put it? And we're thinking, well, we need to, you know, repurpose the Bruin Auditorium. And so that's what we decided to do. And so in addition to just kind of giving it a new paint scheme on the outside, you know, we, we sort of redid some of the exterior brickwork and things, and we gave it a fresh paint scheme. And um, we kind of based the paint colors on the um, old ice palace at Hershey Park, which I think they later turned into their little convention hall. But it was originally an ice skating palace. It's actually still there. They just kind of kept adding on to it. So that's kind of where we got sort of the, the gray and beige uh, coloring. Um, but the interior, I'm going to let Wolf Tanner talk about it because he did some amazing stuff inside. And I'm going to switch this to night mode while he's talking because it needs to be seen at night. So Wolf Tanner, what did you do inside this thing? Well, as, uh, as usual, peace count be damned. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I was tasked to turn this into a ballroom. So I took inspiration from the actual Blackpool Tower Ballroom in uh, Blackpool Beach in England, um, which is still there. Um, and this is what it turned out to be. So you basically have uh, yeah, downstairs, you have table seating for anybody that would like to eat while they dance. And then mm -hmm. upstairs, the upper other two levels are just uh, seating. But uh, this end of the auditorium has actually a pipe organ in it um, and a little uh, stage so uh, they can do concerts and things like that. Um, and there's also there's some pipes here, but then also above it, there's more pipes um, that you can see through the, the grates above it. Um, so you get that full, the full effect of a, uh, of a grand pipe organ. Um, Beautiful. It, 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 it took me a while. I, it was a lot of, um, figuring out how I wanted it to look and then duplicating it, but then stuff didn't like line up. <laughs> there was, there was that. No. Now you did help with, uh, doing these inlays in the floor because I had no clue how to do an inlay and so um, fishermen came up with these beautiful um inlays that are set into the dance floor well we tried to figure out you know we wanted them to be wood and we tried to figure out what could we use that was wood we could that was small enough that we could use and we really didn't like the you know the planks that were in the game um so we ended up using furniture <laughs> so that's actually furniture buried no. in the ground because it would yeah the floor would have to be smooth you wouldn't you wouldn't couldn't dance on a rough a rough wood floor right um, there is a small stage at the back other side here where the orchestra would be and maybe singers or something like that um and a little suggestion of uh of a backstage and stuff too but um cool. but it's all very 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 much over the top <laughs> But every time yeah. I see this, I'm just blown away. It just, it does look fantastic. It's beautiful. beautiful. And on our Discord, on our uh, Arc Discord, I posted a picture of the Rose Lake Ballroom, and then I posted a picture of the um, Blackpool Tower Ballroom, and it's very close. You can definitely see the inspiration. So it's amazing. You did such a good job in here. It just took me like way too long, but <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> yes, it didn't. Very beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Well, you know what, guys? I think this is where we're going to wrap it up for today, because we have at least this much to talk about, and uh, maybe a little bit more next for the next recording. I know Matt has to get to sleep soon. It's getting late over there, so we're going to wrap this up for today. But guys, after. The second recording, we're going to make the 1939 map available in the workshop. And again, make sure that when you get the park, make sure you get the billboard files, the audio files. Make sure you check out the blog. I'm going to link to all the maps that are already released 
and the blog in the description of this video. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel so that you can make sure you can follow the project as it goes along. But we're going to go ahead and sign off for today. Just to sign off, I've been Fisherman and I've been joined by these two guys. You want to say goodbye, guys? Uh, this is Wolf Penner and Matt Downs. Alrighty, and we will see you guys uh, next time.